you know, we had some issues last year. Then we'd show up at road courses and we would kind of outsmart ourselves or try to like reinvent the wheel, come up with some super crazy trick setup because we knew our cars were not as good as the other manufacturers, you know. Um, so we shot ourselves in the foot a few times, and here was one of them for sure. Like we came here and completely disregarded everything we know about this track thinking it was a new car and it's going to be different and and um, we ran terrible and it was like okay that was dumb we're idiots and uh but no i mean i think honestly just a lot of hard work in the off season um you know nascar obviously let everybody do some redesigning on the front end with the, the louvers and the nose and all that stuff and i think we were able to get you know get our cars to where the other guys were uh and and closer to you know I guess maybe the Chevrolets that were super fast on the road courses last year. So that was a part of it. And then just, uh, you know, James and, and my engineers and, and our team, um, you know, working hard to get, figure out a good setup that I would like and it would, something that would work for me here. Um, that was like what we used to run in the past. So there's a lot to it. It's really hard to even, un, you know, explain it. Tons of hard work in the off season from every angle um, on road courses, on short tracks and, really on everything but but short tracks and road courses for sure were a big focus um as a as a group with toyota and with with jgr martin once you were out front you really could check up and kyle said he gave it everything he had in those final three laps but um would you rather have kyle as your teammate racing against him or rather have him in a different organization racing against him or does it matter i don't think it matters you know, I think Kyle and I have raced um, together long enough and have enough respect for, for one another to race hard but race clean. I think we understand each other, know our limits. And, um, you know, honestly, I think in the last, uh, I don't know, 17, 18 years, we've had maybe two run-ins where it was like, oh, that was that was stupid. I was an idiot. <laughs> you know what I mean? One on, I think one for each of us, literally. And um, we've had some great races. We finished one, two a lot of times. We battled for for the lead for wins a bunch, and um, you know he's he's great to race with. I'd I'd race with him any day of the week for for a win, and um, and and feel like we could do it fair, we could do it hard and respectfully. So um, I was totally fine with with him being at the front with me, and uh, you know obviously I'm lucky. To, I'm I'm happy he didn't get close, but um, you know because he would have been getting after it like he always does, but. Uh, no concerns at all to race against Kyle. And how valuable was clean air? Because it seemed like the guy out front, it was, you know, unless you had fresh tires behind, you were pretty well set. Yeah, I mean, you know, we came from 10th there, uh, halfway through the race there, or end of stage two when that caution fell. And, and we got, you know, some guys had just pitted not long before that. So we had to restart 10th. And it's tough to pass here. It always has been. There's only, you know, two really good passing zones. and. Uh, even those are difficult sometimes to get it get it set up right with with a guy, even if he has a little bit older tires. So you just kind of just try to pressure a guy and make him slip somewhere and, and find an opening. But um, it's definitely hard to pass, and you know clean air is is obviously a big deal. I don't think it was as bad as last year by any means um, with you know the package we have now, the short track package. I think it was a little bit better than last year for sure. I mean I could run close to guys. You just lose a little bit of grip. And, you know, at a track where you're just sliding all the time and you don't have much grip to begin with, it makes it tough. Um, but I think for, for us, being a leader, being able to drive away, just our car was that good. You know, I could manage tires easier and, and not have to run as hard to lead. Uh, and that's always, it always kind of makes the lead get bigger and look easier than it is. Go to Jeff and then to Bob. Martin, um, you know, obviously, it, it was the cars last year, right? But at the time, is it, it, what, yeah, cars, yeah, and cars and setups. But so yeah. yeah, but I guess is there any part of that when when your performance falls off, does the doubt start to creep in? Like, oh crap! Like, is no. it me? Am I part? You you knew. Yeah, I mean, I knew I know how to get around this track, right? So it's like, all right, you know, maybe I'm not the the best driver at this track. I don't know. Maybe somebody else could go a tenth of a second faster than my car than I do. I doubt they could, but. It's possible, right? But they're not going to be a second off like we were last year. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. We just we knew we were off. So it's you don't even question it when you're that far off. It's like, it's like yeah, that was dumb. What, what were we even thinking? And um, 
you know, we kind of knew before the race even started we screwed up, but we couldn't do anything about it because it's like you come with certain setup and it's, and you can't change it after practice. But, uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I got that question a lot last year because we didn't win. But, like, I never thought we couldn't win again. We should have won a bunch of races last year, even though our cars weren't probably the best cars in the field. Toyota, as a group, probably was off. I still felt like we should have won five or six races. And, you know, we did think we made mistakes. We had some bad luck. We had some crazy things happen. Um, and that's just racing. But I don't think any of us ever got down. That's why my team's a whole, all the same, you know, still right now. And we never gave gave up believing in each other. We just kept working hard. We're like, we just got to work harder. We got to be smarter. We got to make better decisions. And um, And you put better cars with that. You know, the next thing you know, you're winning races, you're leading laps again. So um, I never thought we couldn't win another race. Sometimes you think you may not win another race, but we know we we're, are capable. That's different, I think. And what was your interaction with Shaq like just now? Uh, it was cool. You know, I think he was he was nice. I think um, Dale Jr. and him did something years ago at, um, I don't know, it was for Nationwide or something. I think he did like a ride around. He took him around Concord Motor Speedway, and so he just told me the story about getting to meet him and how cool he was and all that. So I told him that, and he's like, oh, that, that's nice. But, um, yeah, he was nice, nice guy. I, um, I didn't know he was a DJ. Who would have thought? But uh, he's killing it out there. <laughs> They're rocking. <laughs> it's we'll like a to, dance club. We'll go to Bob and then in the back to Tom and then to Adam. Uh, Bob Parker's Fox Sports. Uh, Martin. At the end of most road course races, if there's a late caution, there seems to be, you know, total chaos. So why wasn't there today? Just the track layout, um, you know, narrow track. You go through turn one up the hill to turn two. There's not a lot of room for, like, dive bombs. There's no room for guys to, you know, okay, compared to, like, Indianapolis, for example. You have a long straightaway that's eight cars wide or eight car, you know, car widths wide. Going into a corner, that's two cars wide flat 90 degrees this is like you get through turn one it's slippery it's kind of narrow there's nowhere to go you can't dive bomb people and just go in there like you do at coda you know you go up the hill and everybody bonds eyes and it's five wide and you got to turn you know uh i don't know 120 degrees or 180 degrees to go back the other way and and you get run out run over and run into so just the track layout and and that's why i think you know i watched Watching Portland last weekend with with moving the Xfinity starting uh, the box to restart in back that made their restarts a lot more sane and and racy too and not as as much of just a clown show where you know everybody bonds eyes into turn one at the end of the race and runs through each other. We were a victim of that at Coda, and it's frustrating. Um, but it's just the layout here of the track keeps that from happening for the most part. All right, we'll go to Tom. Tom Zaleski on County today. This is your fourth win here, Martin. Um, almost Gordon territory, but here's the. Th but, but how how did the lack of the stage cautions and not having that uh, having that luxury did that did that affect your strategy at all? Yeah, it did. I mean, you know, I think if it was if there was going to be yellow flags at the stages, we would have, you know, threw away our stage points and pitted before the stage which is what we, you know, I talked about yesterday when I was here. Um, you know, that's, I think, why we, we all like this. You know, with stage racing is awesome. I love it. I think everything about it is great. But at road courses, you had to, you had to for the most part, say, okay, we're just going to give up stage points because we think we can win the race. You kind of had to pick and choose. Um, so I think today, you know, showed that it worked out. Uh, we were able to get some stage points, not as many as we should have because, Towards the end of stage two there, the caution fell, and we pitted, and some guys stayed out. But, you know, in general, I think for the overall strategy of road course racing, it's better without the, uh, the, the stops when you, when you get the stage breaks. All right, we'll come down here to Adam and then to Steven in the middle. Hi, Martin. Uh, Adam Carabine from RacingRefresh.com. Um, we were talking a little earlier with Coach Gibbs. He was here talking about your confidence this year and how you seem like maybe you're a bit rejuvenated. I'm sure winning helps. Um, but maybe you can talk to just how important it was to win the clash to start off the season. I know it wasn't a points race. Yeah, I mean, I think I talked about it right after that, that it was a big deal for us just to, you know, understand that, um, you know, we were, we were making the right decisions. Um, you know, short tracks were a struggle for us last year. And, you know, to go to the class and do that, I was like, okay, 
we're, we're you know, we're, we're going down the right road here with the things that we're thinking that we did wrong last year and the things we're working on and the direction we're heading um, for short tracks. Uh, that, that was a good confidence booster, you know, and confidence is a huge part of this. Um, and I've said it a lot. It's not so much for the driver, I don't think. It's more for, the, you know, the engineer, the crew chief, the guys that are, like, making the big decisions on the car. There's so many things they have to decide on before we come to the track of, you know, what they're going to put in the car with the simulation and all the things that they have to do. There's a lot of assumptions. There's a lot of guesswork involved. You have to be confident in yourself that, you know, your intuition is a part of that. It's not just computers telling you exactly how to set the car up. So confidence for those guys is a big thing. And um, when you get going down a direction that's working for you and you can make small tweaks, it's a lot easier than being out, being out way out in left field and having to figure it all out and change everything at once. So um, it's just a work in progress. Thanks. Congrats. Yeah. Thank you. We'll come to the middle here to Steven. Uh, Steven Stump, FrenchTrust.com. Uh, Martin, after your most recent win before today at Sonoma in 2019, Chevrolet went on to win 15 of the next 16 road races. Toyota's now won three in a row. Reddick dominated at Coda. You've now dominated here. Would you say that you know Toyota's back, maybe even ahead of Chevrolet at this point when it comes to this department? I don't know. There's only two down. So what's her uh, four to go? Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, I don't know. I think, you know, the interesting thing about this is, you know, all the road courses we do now are very different. Um, it's hard to say. Like, it could be an organizational thing. It could be a manufacturer thing. Like, last year it was definitely a manufacturer thing for us, at least. Uh, we were we were pretty far off. But, you know, I think it can be a manufacturer or a, a team thing as well, you know, with like Reddick last year and, and, and you know, Hendrick a couple years ago were crazy strong on road courses. So it just depends. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. We've got four more to go. We'll see how, how it shakes out, I guess. Okay. And then or five uh, more maybe. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, with the points you earned today, you jumped from fourth in the regular season points to the lead. Um, oh, there's that's, nice, that's a nice surprise. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 10 races left. Obviously, goals to win as many races. <laughs> but now that the 15 points are potentially on the line, how does strategy change going forward for you guys? It doesn't. Um, try to win every stage, try to win every race. I mean, that's, that's kind of what we've always done, even last year when we didn't do any of that. <laughs> you know, that was always our goal when we'd go into a weekend, so it doesn't really change anything. All right, thank you. Thank you. And congrats.